Today on the spec show, I'm going to show you how to change a cutoff wheel on this steel TS500i. Okay, today what I'm going to show you is how to change out the wheel on a TS500i. It sounds pretty simple, just simply take this bolt out, but a lot of people have never done it before. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how the manufacturer wants you to do it, and I'll show you a trick on how I tend to do it. So what the manufacturer has here is they have a hole in here, and they, they supply this little metal rod, and that rod is designed to go in there and contact that pulley to keep the wheel from spinning. Okay, it works really nice, but a lot of people, they tend to lose this or um, they don't use it at all and they use their, their glove or uh, their hand for, for, to hold the wheel so it doesn't spin. So with that in place, it makes it pretty easy. A couple techniques you can do is you can get um, a rag and hold the wheel and then break the, uh, the uh, nut loose or you can apply pressure down on something firm to keep it from spinning which I tend to do, especially on this wood. But one thing you want to watch out for, it depends on what wheel you have, is you don't want to cut your fingers or your hands. So you want to be cognizant of that. You want to either have a gloved hand, a rag, push it down, or use the tool that the manufacturer supplied. Today, we have the um, little round stock going in the pulley to keep it from spinning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wheel off, and it makes it nice because you don't have to worry about it cutting your hand. We do a lot of deep cutting, so we use the whole blade when we're doing um, cutting with these machines. We'll cut thick concrete. What we see happen over time is as we're cutting so deep all the time, it tends to put a sharp edge on this hub right here. So another thing you don't want to do is ever grab it on the side here because it's going to cut you or put some gloves on or something. The wheel that we have on here is a different wheel that comes that it comes with a steel. So what you have to do is you have to use this brass bushing right here. If you're going to use this this wheel here. If you use a steel wheel, it's a 20 millimeter already. All right? So it'll fit right on the saw. Another thing you want to watch out for is you want to look for the arrow direction of travel. Okay, and if that's wore off, you're going to look at these carbide segments and see which way the comet is. The comet should have the leading edge towards the front and go back to the back, and that's going to be the direction of the wheel travels. Another thing you want to look at on a wheel is you want to make sure that the wheel is rated for the saw. I've seen a lot of wheels out there that are rated at about 2,000 RPM that um, I've seen in some people's cache that are designed for cutting wood on maybe a big saw, uh, table saw or something like that, and they've tried to adapt it to a cutoff machine. Well, that's very dangerous. These machines run at an arbor speed of about 5,300 um, RPMs. So you don't want to have one of these wheels come apart. So make sure that the wheel is, uh, is uh, at the right speed recommended for that saw. Um, it's very important. Uh, the other thing is uh, we don't want it to come apart if the the markings are all gone off the wheel and it looks like the wheel is in bad shape by any means now this is an older wheel we're going to use it for demo purpose today the diamond segments are kind of gone but what you're going to see is heat build up and you're going to start to see some cracking if i would put this under a magnifying glass or you know to look at it we'd probably find some cracks cracks in there because it's just over time they're going to get hot so you want to going to discard it so here's a steel wheel it's a 20 millimeter it's going to fit right on there so i'm not going to need that guard what we'll do is we'll find, we'll slip it right back up in there, seat it, you'll take your hub, you'll find the two little knobs that stick out by the bolt, push it in there, and then start your, like I said, it's pretty simple, but you know, something to look for in these wheels. And then of course I have my round stock in the back to keep the wheel from turning, and then just simply snug it up. You don't want to over tight it. Tighten it, you just want to snug it up. And that's it. The wheel has changed. For more information on this segment, you can contact specrescue.com. And for the spec show, I'm Mike Callaher.